Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We got two sets here, three sets total, another one in the executive center. It's our 10th year covering AWS reInvent. I remember 2013 like it was yesterday. You know, now it's a massive people buying out restaurants, 35,000 people, now it's 55,000, soon to be 70,000 back. Great event, continuing to set the standard in the industry. We had an amazing guest here, Leah Bibu, Vice President of Product Marketing. She's in charge of the messaging, the product, overseeing how these products come to market. Leah, great to see you. Thanks for joining me on theCUBE today. Absolutely, it's great to be here. It's also my 10th reInvent, so uh, it's, it's been a wild ride, absolutely. You, know, you and I were talking before we came on camera how much we love products. And yes. This is a product-centric company has been from day one, and you know, over the years, watching the announcements, the tsunami of announcements, just all the innovation that's come out from AWS over the years has been staggering, to say the least. Everyone always jokes about, oh my God, 5,000 new announcements, over 200 services you're managing and you're marketing them. It's pretty crazy right now, and Adam, as he comes on, as I called him the solution CEO on my piece I wrote on Friday, we're in an era where solutions, the products are enabling more solutions. Unpack the messaging around this, because this is a really big moment for Absolutely. AWS. Absolutely, well I'll say first of all that we are a customer focused company that happens to be really good at innovating um, incredible products and services for our customers. So uh, today the, uh, the energy in the room and what Adam talked about I think is focused on a few great things for customers that are really important for transformation. So we talked a lot about best price performance for workloads and we talked about extreme workloads but if you think about the work that we've been doing to innovate on the silicon side, we're really talking about with Graviton all your workloads and getting really great price performance for all of them. Um, you know, we, we came out with Graviton 3, 25% faster than Graviton 2, also 60% uh, more energy efficient. Uh, we talked about something that is emerging that I think is going to be really big, which is simulation, and uh, really the ability to model these complex worlds and uh, all the little interactions, um, which I think, you know, in the future, as we have more complex environments, like 3D simulation is going to be a bigger part of every, every business's you know, every just business. A, just as an aside, we were talking on the analyst segment that speeds and feeds are back, and the old <laughs> days, and the data center days, was like, we don't want to talk about speeds and feeds, it's about solutions and you know, the outcomes. When you get to cloud, it was like, okay, get the workloads over there. But people want faster and lower cost um, performance. Workloads got to be running at, at high performance. And, and there's a real discussion around this. Let's unpack security, data, performance. What, what does that mean for customers? Because again, I get the workloads run fast, that's great. What else is behind the curtain, so to speak, from a customer standpoint? Absolutely, well I think if you're going to move all your workloads to the cloud, you know, uh, security is a really big area that's important. It's important to every one of our enterprise companies, uh, customers, actually it's important to all of our customers. And we've been working, you know, since the beginning of AWS to really create and build the most secure global infrastructure. And, uh, you know, as our customers have moved mission critical workloads, we've built out a lot more capabilities. And now we have a whole portfolio of security services. And what we announced today is kind of game changing. Uh, the service called uh, Security Lake, which brings together you know, an ecosystem of security data in a format that's open so you can share data between all of these sources and it's going to give folks the opportunity to really be able to analyze data, find threats faster, um, and just kind of know their security posture. And I think, you know, as we talked about today, you don't want to think about the cloud as unfathomable, the <laughs> unfathomable deaths. <laughs> Um, you really need yeah. to know that security, and I think that, like a lot of things we discussed, yeah. um, security is a data opportunity, right? And yeah. I think we, we had a section on, on data, but really if you look at the keynote yeah. across security, across solutions, across uh, yeah. the purpose-built things we made, it's all, it all comes yeah. down to data, and it's really yeah. the, the transformational element that our customers are I mean, the data and security, very integral part, good call out there, and I, I want to just double down on that real quick because I remember in 2014 I interviewed Steven Schmidt um, when he was the CISO, and back then, in 2014, if you remember, the conversation was, this the cloud's not secure, got to be on premises. Now, in today's keynote, Adam says, and he laid out the whole global security footprint, there's a lot going on that Amazon has now become more secure than on-prem, he actually made that statement. So, and then plus you got thousands of security partners. third party partners. You got the open cybersecurity schema framework which you guys co-founded with all the other. So you got security not as a team sport. This is what yes. he said. Yes. What does that mean for customers? Because now this is a big deal. 
Well, I think for customers, I mean, it means nothing but goodness, right? Uh, but all of these thousands of security partners have really innovated and created solutions that our customers are using, but they all have different types of data in different silos, and to really get a full picture, bringing all that data together is really important, and it's not easy today. Um, you know, <laughs> log data from different sources, uh, data from detection services, and really what customers want is an easier way to get it all together, which is why we have the open uh, OCSF, and really analyze using the tools of their choice, and whether that's AWS tools for analytics or it's tools from our partners, uh, customers need to be able to make that choice so that they can feel like their applications and their workloads are the most secure on AWS. You know, I've been very impressed with Guard Duty, and I've been following Merit Bear's blogs on, uh, online. Uh, she's in the security team, she's amazing. Um, shout out to her. She's been pushing um, uh, uh, Guard Duty for a long time, now there's big news around guard duty, so you got EKS protection. You know, at KubeCon, this was the biggest cloud native issue. The runtime of Kubernetes and inside the container mm -hmm. and outside the container detection of threats right. as a real software supply chain concern. How are you guys marketing that? This is a huge announcement. It's EKS protection, I know, is very nuanced, but it's a pretty big deal. It is a big deal, it is a big deal. And Guard Duty has been kind of like a quiet service that maybe you don't hear a lot about, but it's been really, really popular with our customers. Adam mentioned that 85% of you know, our top 2,000 customers are using Guard Duty today. And it was a big moment. We launched EKS Protection uh, you know, a little bit earlier, and the customer uptake on that has been really incredible. And it is because you can protect your Kubernetes cluster, which is really important because so many customers are, uh, you know, part of their migration to the cloud is containers. Yeah. And so we're pretty excited that now we can answer that question of what's going on inside the container. And so you have both, yeah. right? You know that your Kubernetes clusters are good, and you know what's going on inside the container, and it's just more threats that you can detect and protect yourself from. You know, as an aside, I'm sure you're watching this, but you know, we go to a lot of events, you know, the CI CD pipeline as developers are getting higher velocity coding, IT has moved in because of DevOps on the cloud into the CI CD pipeline. So you're seeing that developer take some of those IT roles in the coding workflow, hence the, the shift left and or container security, which you guys now announce and are driving towards. But the security and the data teams are emerging yes. as a very key element inside the organizational structure. When I sat down with Adam, one of the things he was very adamant about in my conversation was not just digital transformation, business transformation, yes. structural organizational moves are making where IT is not a department anymore. It is the company. A technology is the company when you transform. Absolutely. So digital, is the process, business is the outcome. This is a really huge message. What's your reaction to that? What's, uh, what can you share extra? Because that's this is a big part of the thing. He hit it right out of the gate on the front end of the keynote. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, um, Companies have been migrating to the cloud for a while, but I think that this time that we're going through has really accelerated that migration. And as part of that, you know, digital transformation has become real for a lot of companies. And it is true what Adam said. Um, if there is technology transformation involved, there's data transformation involved, but it, it is transforming businesses. And I think if you look at some of the things that Adam talked about, um, you know, AWS supply chain, security lake, uh, AWS clean rooms, yeah. and uh, omics, AWS Omics, you know, those are all examples of data yeah. and the ability to work with data transforming different lines of business within a company, yeah. uh, transforming horizontal processes like contact centers and like supply chain, um, and also, you know, going into vertical specific solutions. So what it means is that as um, technology becomes more pervasive, as data becomes more pervasive, businesses are transforming and that means that a lot more people are going to use the cloud and yeah. interact with the cloud and they might not want to or be able to kind of use our building blocks and so what's really exciting that what we're able to do is make cloud more accessible to lines of business folks, to analysts, yeah. um, to security folks, so it's- Yeah, it's and, that's why, and that's why I was calling my, this, this new trend I see as Amazon Classic, my words, not your words, I call it the AWS Classic Cloud and then you got the next gen cloud, the new next generation and I was talking with Adrian Cockcroft, former AWS, so he's now retired, he's going to come on later today. He and I were talking, he used this thing of, you got a bag of Legos, AKA primitives, or a toy that's been assembled for you, glued together, one's out of the box, but they're not mutually exclusive. You can build a durable application and foundation with the building blocks, more durable, you can manage it, refine it, but you got the solution, if it breaks, you don't have as much flexibility, but you got to replace it, that's okay too. So like, this is now kind of a new portfolio approach 
see the cloud. It's very interesting, and I think, I think, I think that's what I took away from the keynote, is that you can have both. Yes. Absolutely. You can do both. I mean, we're going to go full throttle on releasing innovations and pushing the envelope on compute and storage and databases and our core services because they matter. And having you know the choice to choose from a wide range of options, I mean, that's what that's what customers need. You know, if you're going to run HPC, you're going to run machine learning, and you're going to run your SAP applications or your Windows applications. You need choice of yeah. what you know specific type of instance and compute capabilities you need to get the best price performance. It's it's definitely not a one size fits all. It's yeah. a 600 uh, instance type size fits all, maybe. <laughs> exactly, and you got a lot of instance, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. I love the themes, I love this keynote themes you had, like at first space, where I get the whole data, trying to look at it, you can look at it differently. Really good metaphor. The ocean one I love with the security because he mentioned you can have the confidence to explore, go deep snorkeling versus scuba, and knowing how much oxygen you have. I mean, so really cool metaphor, made me think, very provocative. So again, this is kind of why people go to AWS, because you now have these, these abilities to do things differently, depend on the context of what products you're working with. Yes. Explain why that was the core theme. Was there any rationale behind that? Was it just how you guys saw it? I mean, that was pretty clever. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, we're, we're talking about environments, and I think in this world, you know, there's uncertainty in a lot of places, and we really feel like all of us need to be prepared for different types of environments, and so we wanted to explore what that could look like, and I think, um, you know, we're fascinated by space and the vastness, and it is very much like the world of data. Um, I don't know about you, but I actually scuba dive, so I love the depths <laughs> of the ocean. I loved working on that part. Um, there's extremes, extreme yeah. workloads like HPC, extreme workloads yeah. like machine learning with the growing models, and, um, and then there's the, the imagination, which he, is also one of my favorite areas to explore. Yeah, and you use the Antarctica one for the, about the whole environment and extreme conditions. That's getting the performance, and I love that piece of it, and I want to get into the, some of the things. I love the speeds, and I think the, the big innovation with the silicon we've been covering, as you know, like a blanket, the, he's got the Graviton 3, 25% faster than Graviton 2, the C7GN, Network Intense Workloads. This is kind of a big deal. I mean, this is one of those things where it might not get picked up in the major press, but the network use cases are significant. Nitro's been successful. Share your thoughts on these kinds of innovations because they look kind of small, but they're not, they're big. They're not small, for sure, especially at the scale that our customers are, are, are running their applications. Like every little optimization that you can get really makes a huge difference. And I think it's exciting. I mean, you hit on, you kind of hit on it when We've been working on silicon for a while now. We know that you know if we're going to keep pushing the element, the yeah. uh, envelope in these areas, we had to we had to go down to the silicon. And I think that uh, nitro has really been what's kind of been a breakthrough for us. You know, reinventing yeah. that virtualization layer, offloading security and storage, and networking to special purpose chips. And I think that it's not just in the area of network optimization, right? You saw yeah. training optimized instances yeah. and inference optimized instances and HPC optimized instances. So yeah, we are kind of um, looking at all the extremes of, of what customers want to do. I know you can't talk about the future, but I can almost connect the dots as you're talking. It's like, hmm, specialized instances, specialized chips, maybe programmability of workload, smart intelligence, generative AI weaving in there. A lot of kind of cool things I can see around the corner around generative AI, automation. Hey, go to this instance for that, go here. This is kind of what I see kind of coming around the corner. And we have some of that with our instance optimizers, our cost optimizer products, where you know, we want to help customers find the best instance for their workload, get the best utilization they possibly can, you know, cut costs, yeah. uh, but still have the great performance. So I don't, I don't know about your future, John, it sounds great, but we have, you know, we're yeah. taking steps in that direction today. Silicon is code. That's going to be, oh, that is code. Okay, anyway, okay, I want to give you one <laughs> final question, well, well, two questions. One was a comment Adam made, I'd love to get your reaction. If you want to tighten your belt, come to the cloud. I thought that was a very interesting nuance. A lot of economic pressure. Cloud is an opportunity to get an agile time to value faster. Um, we had ZS Curvella, a cube analyst who's with us earlier, said the more you spend on the cloud, the more you save. That was his line, which I thought was very smart. Spending more doesn't mean you're going to lose money, it means you can save money too. So a lot of cost optimization discussions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tighten your belt, come to the cloud. What does he mean by that? Well, I think that in, in times where you know, there's uncertainty and economic conditions, it is, it's really, you know, you sometimes want to pull back, 
kind of you know band down the hatches, but the cloud really, and we saw this with COVID. You know, if you if you move to the cloud, not only can you cut costs, but you put yourself in this position where you can continue to innovate and you can be agile and you can be prepared for whatever environment you're in, so that you know when things uh, go back or you have a customer yeah. need that and your innovation that goes off, like you, you can accelerate back up really, really quickly. And I think we talked about Airbnb, uh, that example of how, <laughs> you know, in, in that really tough time of COVID when travel industry wasn't happening so much, you know, they were able to scale back and save money. Yeah. And then at the same time when, you know, Airbnb's kind of, once again, yeah. travel came back, they were in a position to really, really quickly yeah. change with the, the customer needs. You know, Leah, it's always great talking with you. You got a lot of energy, you're so smart, and you, we both love products, and you're leading the product marketing. We have an Instagram challenge uh, here on theCUBE. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Oh my gosh. It's called Instagram, we call it a bumper sticker section. We used to call it, what's the bumper sticker for reInvent? But the, we kind of modernized it. If you were going to do an Instagram reel right now, what would be the Instagram reel for reInvent? Keynote, day one, as we look forward, we got Werner, we'll probably talk about productivity with developers. What's the Instagram reel for reInvent? Wow. <laughs> that means I have to get short with it, right? <laughs> I am, I'm not always There's that no short. There's no wrong answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, this is really big day one, so it's excitement, it's we're glad to be here. We have a lot coming for you, we're super excited, and if you think about it, it's price performance, it's data, it's security, and it's solutions for purpose-built use cases. Great job, congratulations. I love the message, I love how you guys had the theme, I thought this keynote was great, and it's great to see Amazon continue to innovate um, with, with, the, with, the, with the innovation on the product side, but as we get into the transformation, starting to see these solutions, and the ecosystem is thriving, and we're looking forward to hearing the, the new uh, partner chief, uh, Ruba, tomorrow. On, see what she's got a new plan, apparently, unveiling. So, exciting, everyone's pretty excited. Thanks for coming great. on. Great, thanks for having me. All right, Leah Bibb here on theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. More live coverage after this short break. We'll be right back here, day two of theCUBE, day one of reInvent. A lot of great action, three day, four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back.